The industry wants to invest 100 billion pounds in new generation capacity by 2020 alone. And that will be in nuclear, in renewable energy, but also in coal-fired generation if companies get the go-ahead and the clear policy is set by government. The report foresees changes in the way we'll all live our lives in the coming 42 years, some easier to cope with than others. But making substantial cuts at home is the most convincing way for the government to lead, especially as it embarks on something even more ambitious, international efforts to forge a carbon deal for the entire planet in the coming year. But appearing tonight as the chair of the Committee on Climate Change, which produced today's report to discuss the committee's recommendations, David Porter, chief executive of the Association of Electricity Producers and the environmental camp campaigner George Monbiot. Um, by how much would the average electricity bill have to rise to meet these uh, objectives? Our estimate says that the electri average electricity bill in 2020 would probably be something like 20 to 25 per cent higher than it would be if we'd never had these uh, objectives. That is partly because actually we are choosing a fairly expensive form of uh, renewable energy by going for offshore uh, wind. We're taking a cost penalty by going offshore rather than onshore, as the Germans or Spanish have done. So part of it, frankly, is a cost of preserving the countryside rather than low-carbon economy per se. But that is the order of magnitude which is required. In addition to whatever price rises would have occurred anyway? Well, that depends, actually. If fossil fuel prices are very high, then the cost penalty of going to renewables uh, is less. It's 25% on the average expectation of fossil fuel prices. Of course, if oil and gas prices were higher than we now expect, the cost penalty of moving to renewables uh, is less than that estimate. Well, I suppose you could offset a lot of that, couldn't you? 25% increase on people's uh, electricity bills. I mean, look at com com companies like Centrica, £992 billion in six months, hiking prices 35% in the process. I mean. You guys could fund all that without any trouble at all. Uh, no, and we've been saying for a, a long time now that uh, if you want a low-carbon electricity industry and you don't choose any more to use the cheapest fuels, it, it has to be paid for. There, there's no free lunch here. And the cheapest fuels are? Well, the cheapest fuel would probably at the moment be, uh, be coal. Right. Is this the end of coal, George Monbiot? Yes. Well, it should be the end of coal. It will certainly be the end of coal if any of the recommendations in this report are adopted. And, in fact, we need to go far beyond those. The idea that we can build a new generation of coal-fired power stations now flies in the face of everything the government says it wants well, to achieve where climate change is You don't rule concerned. out new coal-fired power stations, do you? We have clearly said that... It is incompatible with what we're trying to achieve, that coal-fired power stations are running without carbon capture and storage, we've said beyond the early 2020s, and we've therefore said that if there are new coal-powered power stations built now, there has to be a clear route to which they would have carbon capture and storage technology by the early 2020s. If it's been invented by then? It's not a matter of inventing. Carbon capture and storage is a technology which works in its, its elements in different parts across the world. It's not like third-generation biofuels or thin-film photovoltaics. There aren't things that happen to happen back in the science labs. But it does need to be illustrated at production scale, and that is a very important investment you, that we've now got to make sure is, is put in place. you a power station on the basis of this prognosis, what you're going to have to do in 20, by but 2020? Th this is a big issue because uh, several major electricity companies in the UK want to build new coal-fired power stations. They know the carbon regime, they, they know that things are going to get tighter, but they want to build coal for good commercial reasons and to help keep the lights on in the UK. And uh, at the moment they work within the EU uh, emissions trading scheme, which limits their carbon output, and uh, this, this is a sudden jerk on the tiller, really, to say uh, that... that uh, Coal can only, coal-fired power stations can only be built in, in certain circumstances. George Monbiot, a lot of people watching this programme will be thinking, here we are, ploughing straight into a recession, people are uncertain about their jobs and everything else, a dare turner says their, uh, their fuel bills have got to go up by something like a quarter, uh, and China in the meantime is going to carry on belching out all this muck into the atmosphere regardless of what we do. Mm. What's the point? Well, we're in no position to lecture China or anybody but, else unless we get our own act together. And you know, things are dire. I mean, the problem with climate change, obviously, is that the major effects don't hit till sometime after the event. But 
the, the trajectory we are on at the moment, unless these recommendations are adopted, even if they are adopted, is dire. But unless they're adopted, we're looking at the possibility of six degrees of warming by the end of this century. That's the end your, of human civilization over yeah, much of the Your planet. calculation is that we can avoid that, we can get to two degrees, is that right? Yeah, our expectation is that if we follow the path that yeah. we've set out, which is an 80% cut by 2050, as part of a global deal which would involve a 50% cut, then the best expectation might be an increase of two, two and a half degrees centigrade. That's the best we can hope for if it, we I, take these really radical steps. I think it is now unlikely that the world can stop uh, with high see, certainty an increase of, there, of two degrees. There are degrees. some environmentalists, think, you may be among mm, them, George, I think mm, it could get a whole lot worse than that because mm, it's already multiplying, yeah. as it were. Yeah. Uh, uh, all the latest science shows that your... Um, uh, but, but your connection between an 80% cut and 2 degrees or 2 point something degrees of warming just no longer holds. You're putting us onto a course, even with this radical report, for 4 degrees of global warming. Well, That's the most likely outcome because what you're calling for is for the, the atmospheric concentration of greenhouse gases to rise before it comes down. Now, there's, uh, all the evidence is pointing to the fact that it will not come down. If you let it get to that point, by the end of the century, it'll be too late and it'll trigger further global warming. We need even more radical cuts than the ones you're proposing. Crikey, even more radical than he's proposing. What, what I'm, I mean, based on, on a, a new about paper in the Philosoph or something. I mean, it, this no. is really not an attractive proposition. Well, it's not an attractive, there will be pain. It's not attractive, but it can be done. And what I'm doing in The Guardian tomorrow is, is I've laid out a plan for how we could get 25% cuts by the end of 2012. And that's the sort of emergency footing that we have to put the economy on what, if we're you, not to face much greater pain like later that? on. We can deliver a carbon neutral electricity industry in, in Europe by 2050. And that's, that's what we've generally been aiming for. If we try to accelerate that too radically, I think we'll, we'll uh, damage in investment prospects in the industry. Well, we need to build who one... Who gives monkeys about investments prospects if we're all the, going to be dead? The customer will care because we'll be having well, discussions customer around this customer, table. The customer, the customer won't have a life. Uh, the, the, the lights will be going out and yeah. uh, that, that well, counts for people a great deal. I want to ask you about another thing we haven't discussed and it's not in your report either. Why aren't you t tackling aviation? The fastest well, growing source of this. No, stuff. no, that's not true. We, we have an entire chapter on aviation. We p point out the speed of its increase. We have said that the 80% target by 2050 has to include aviation. The European emission targets uh, for reductions by 2020 do include aviation, and aviation is in the European emissions trading scheme. So we have said it does have to be included in the overall targets. We have to go a whole lot further, though. Well... I think we, the key thing is to make sure that it is within your overall targets and you, within the overall amount that you're trying to reduce, you accept that if it can't be decreased as much as other elements can be decreased, then something else has to give more. What matters is the totality George, of well, the reduction has to be of, significant We're enough. not looking at decreases at all. I mean, the government has got, has put it, putting us on a track for more or less a doubling of aviation between now and 2030. And as the, the Tyndall Centre's analysis suggests, that alone could mop up just about all the carbon emissions that the whole economy should be producing well, by I, 2050. We, we, we do those calculations. We're not quite as... Uh, a, our figures are not quite as big as that, but we certainly illustrate that on a business-as-usual trajectory, by, say, 2050, the emissions from aviation would be a very significant proportion. We wouldn't say twice as much, but a very significant proportion of the total amount we want to admit, uh, emit. Therefore, we do believe it is important both to almost certainly constrain demand in some way, but also to pursue technological improvements. There are technological improvements possible uh, in uh, aviation. It is possible that it is the area where we will eventually use biofuels at the most, because other things like surface right. transport we have alternatives to biofuels such as electric cars so I don't think we have to give up on flying but certainly we have to have it within okay. the overall envelope of the reductions we're trying to achieve we'll leave it there we'll have to read your manifesto in the Guardian tomorrow thank you all very much thank you